In this video, I'm going to walk through a required practical from the rates of reaction topic. There are two required practicals in this topic, and this video will focus on one of them. We're going to measure how long a reaction takes when the concentration of a reactant is changed. The reaction in this practical is between sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid. This produces sulfur, sodium chloride, water and sulfur dioxide. The sulfur is formed as a solid precipitate, so what we'll see as more and more of it is produced is our resulting solution becoming more and more cloudy, until eventually the cross that we've placed underneath is no longer visible. We're going to do this reaction first of all with 8 grams per decimeter cubed sodium thiosulfate and we'll measure the time it takes for the cross to no longer be visible at all. We'll then repeat this reaction with a more concentrated sodium thiosulfate and we'll keep increasing the concentration each time we repeat this reaction to see how that changes the amount of time for the cross to disappear. The different concentration solutions are made by diluting 40 grams per decimeter cube sodium thiosulfate with distilled water. All solutions have a total volume of 50 centimetres cubed, just with differing ratios of sodium thiosulfate and distilled water. The least concentrated solution has the most distilled water, and as we get more and more concentrated, less distilled water is added, until finally, the most concentrated solution has no distilled water added at all. The independent variable in a reaction is the thing that you change and you should only be changing one thing at a time. If we look back at our reaction, we can see we are changing the concentration of sodium thiosulfate, so this is our independent variable. The dependent variable is defined as what you measure in a reaction. So again, looking back at our method, we're measuring the time taken for the cross to disappear. So that is our dependent variable. Control variables are the things that we keep the same to make sure it's a fair test. Remember, we're focusing on how concentration affects rate, so we don't want anything but the concentration to change, otherwise we couldn't be sure that the results we get are a result of concentration change or some other thing we've changed. Here are some of the control variables I've thought of, but you may be able to think of some more. We're keeping the concentration of hydrochloric acid the same, and I'll be using 2 molar acid for every iteration in this reaction. We'll be keeping the temperature the same as best we can by staying in the same lab with the same room temperature throughout. Increasing temperature increases rate, so we don't want a change in temperature to play a role here. Finally, we'll be using the same cross, and what I mean here is it doesn't really have to be the same cross every time, but it should be a similar boldness and visibility. Let's say you drew a cross with a thick black marker pen for one reaction, and then drew a cross with a light pencil for the next. It's probably easier to see the black marker pen through the cloudy solution, so your timings for when you see the cross disappearing may be incongruent in that situation. We're going to record our results on a table like this. On the furthest left column, we put our independent variable, so the concentration of sodium thiosulfate. Then we need a column to show the results from the dependent variable, which is the time taken for the cross to disappear. Now you'll see I've put trial 1 here, because you're going to repeat these reactions a total of 3 times and then calculate the mean. So you'll have a trial 1, a trial 2, and trial 3, and then a column for the mean. You calculate the mean by adding up the values of all the trial runs you did, and then dividing by the number of trials. For example, let's say for the 8 grams per decimeter cubed reaction, my results were 150, 152 and 152 seconds. To calculate the mean, you need to add together all of those trial values and then divide by 3 because there are 3 trials. Now let's look at another example. Let's say for the 16 grams per decimeter cubed reaction, my results were 76, 78 and 45. This 45 is wildly different to my other two results, and we call this an anomalous result. A result like this suggests you've probably done something wrong in the experiment, 
and it probably can't be trusted, so it should not be included in your calculation of the mean. So for this calculation, we would do 76 plus 78, and then divide by 2, because this time we're only including two of the trials. So now, let's see how this practical is carried out. So we start off by making the 8 gram per decimeter cubed sodium thiosulfate solution. We have 10 centimeters cubed of 40 grams per decimeter cubed sodium thiosulfate and 40 centimeters cubed of distilled water. Pour that into a conical flask, give it a swirl and then place that onto your cross. Then you need to add the 10 centimeters cubed of 2 molar hydrochloric acid. Swirl the conical flask and start the stopwatch. This is the weakest concentration of sodium thiosulfate we have, so the reaction takes a little while, and I've sped up the video. Note that on camera it may look like the cross has disappeared, but in real life and viewed from above I could still see the cross for quite a while. You'll see me stop the timer as soon as I judged that it couldn't be seen anymore. This can be a little tricky to judge, but just try and stop it at the same opacity each time you repeat this reaction with a different concentration of sodium thiosulfate. Now onto the 16 grams per decimeter cubed solution. I made this by mixing 20 centimeters cubed of sodium thiosulfate with 30 centimeters cubed of distilled water. And you saw me adding the 10 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid, swirling the conical flask and starting the timer. Now this reaction is going to go slightly faster as, as I'm using a more concentrated sodium thiosulfate solution. However, this video is still slightly sped up. Again, stop the timer when you've judged that the cross can no longer be seen. This may be tricky, but just try and make sure you get it at a similar point of disappearance for each reaction. Here is the reaction with the 24 grams per decimeter cubed solution. This was made by mixing 30 centimeters cubed of sodium thiosulfate with 20 centimeters cubed distilled water. Again, 10 centimeters cubed hydrochloric acid was added and the reaction mixture was stirred whilst the clock was started. Here is the reaction with the 32 grams per decimeter cubed solution. This was made by mixing 40 centimeters cubed of sodium thiosulfate with 10 centimeters cubed distilled water. Again, 10 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid was added and the reaction mixture was swirled whilst the clock was started. And finally, the reaction with the 40 grams per decimeter cubed solution. This is the original concentration of the sodium thiosulfate that I've previously diluted. So this time, I don't need any distilled water, it's just the 50 centimeters cubed of sodium thiosulfate. Add 10 centimeters cubed hydrochloric acid, swell the mixture and start the stopwatch. This time I haven't sped up the video. You can see this reaction completes much faster as it's the most concentrated sodium thiosulfate solution. After repeating all of that two more times and finding the mean, I produce this results table. So as to not crowd the slide with too many numbers, I've left out all the trial recordings. I'm just showing the different concentrations of sodium thiosulfate and the mean time for the cross to disappear. We can see from these numbers that as the concentration of sodium thiosulfate increases, the time for the cross to disappear decreases. If a reaction takes less time, it means the reaction went faster, which is why if the time taken decreases, we know the rate of reaction has increased. Now I'm going to plot this on a graph. So here is my graph with the time taken for the cross to disappear on the y-axis and the concentration of sodium thiosulfate on the x-axis. You can see this graph is non-linear, we don't get a straight line. But you can see that as the concentration increases, the time taken for the cross to disappear is decreasing, meaning the rate of reaction is increasing. 
I hope you found this useful. The other required practical within this rate of reaction topic is covered in another video, and that looks at how a change in concentration affects the rate at which a gaseous product is produced. You can find a link to that video here. I also have plenty more required practical videos, so make sure you check out my channel.